Dolph Ziggler of SmackDown Live is going after the Cruiserweight Champion right now. This is Retribution for SmackDown Live. No, 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 this ain't necessary. Turn around, Cena. Cena, no. Spear by Reigns. There's Okada. There's Okada. And Gargano from behind trying to steal one. Curb stomp. Okada's attempts at screwing over the match failed. The mind games have been played here tonight on ECW. Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is ECW. It is the last one before Survivor Series. And boy oh boy, do we have something incredible coming your way at the end of this evening. Since it's going to be the last time they meet before Survivor Series. Since it's going to be the last show regarding Survivor Series to be aired before the event itself. We're going out big here on ECW and the main event will meet face to face in the ring for the very first time. Yes, you see it right there. Instead of having a main event of the evening, what we have instead is Seth Rollins and Kazuchika Okada in the ring standing across from one another. It is going to be a stare down for the ages. They are going to talk to one another face to face for the very first time and send their final messages before Survivor Series. It is going to be something absolutely outstanding. I cannot wait to see this. The works was done. Okada's here for one night and it may well be his last. And it may well be the last one where he's in the ring standing across from the greatest of all time. The man who will go on at Survivor Series to beat the Rainmaker. That is to come at the end of the evening. I can't wait for it. But we still have four entertaining matches on their way. And we're going to start things off in the Cruiserweight division with a rematch from last week. All right, well, last week we were supposed to have this man, TJP, in action, taking on the Cruiserweight champion in Zack Sabre Jr. That, well, that never happened. It never happened because a certain Dolph Ziggler came along and attacked Zack Sabre Jr. backstage as revenge for Zach Gibson, the man who was accompanying Zack Sabre Jr.'s uh, here tonight, attack on Cody Rhodes last week on SmackDown Live. It's all playing into the part of the British Empire, taking on the American Show-Offs and Cesaro and Cassius Ono at Survivor Series in that 4v4 Survivor Series elimination match. It's going to be thrilling. There's no doubt about it. I absolutely cannot wait for it. And I talked about it last night on SmackDown Live about how it's more than just brand supremacy. It's, it's not about that. If, if the British Empire win, I'm not going to rub it into SmackDown and Raw. There's a part of me that doesn't even want them to win because of the actions that they've taken here on ECW since their formation. With that being said, in almost everything is building and building, and we saw it last night on SmackDown Live as well with the way the show ended, a brawl backstage between Neville and Cody Rhodes. Security was able to break it up just after the show went off the air. Neville was accompanied out of the arena. Uh, I have find Neville. I've gone on my way. I find him. I banned him from the arena here tonight. I said to Neville, don't show up. Or, the, or otherwise there will be worse repercussions for you lot. Just let this match happen. Stay back. Uh, stay home. For God's sake, listen to something for once in your life. Whether or not that gets actually listened to, well, we'll find out as the night goes on. But... It's the only match involving the British Empire here tonight, and it is the Cruiserweight Champion in action. Zack Sabre Jr. in his first match uh, since winning that Cruiserweight Championship back at No Way Out. Two-time Cruiserweight Champion now is ZSJ, and he goes into Survivor Series as the only champion in that matchup. And what we're seeing here from, Zach, uh, from uh, TJP in this one is very interesting. He's trying to infuriate, I think, Zack Sabre Jr. early on. Trying to... Put the submission wrestler in a bunch of submissions, but oh, Sabre Jr. responding in the best way possible there. Just took the leg completely out from underneath him. And this is where Zack Sabre Jr. gets to go to work now. This is where he becomes dangerous, attacking the leg there of TJP. And I don't think things are going to be getting any better for him either. TJP's in trouble now. On the mat. To Zack Sabre Jr. is a dangerous place to be, and I think everyone needs to be aware of that. No matter who it is in that... Uh, on the opposite end of the ring in that um, Survivor Series match, if it's Cesaro, if it's Cassius Ono, if it's Ziggler, if it's Rhodes, whoever it is, they need to be aware that they are in a very dangerous position being back being on the mat to Sabre Jr. I think Sabre Jr. will gladly take pride in showing you what he means by that as well. Look at this, stomping away on the back and kicking him in the face. 
all while controlling that arm. That's the, that's the vital point to all this. Sabre Jr. controlling and contorting the body in ways that it shouldn't as he inflicts devastating impact on his opponent. And now he has the arms. What are we going to see here? Look at, oh, look at that. The way that leg rolled there. It is not meant to roll in that direction. Zack Sabre Jr. simply does not care, though. TJP still trying to fight back here. The Harukarana from him. Big match for TJP regardless of the situation. Victory over the Cruiserweight Champion. And you're the number one contender for the title coming out of Survivor Series. Oh, not when your leg is being taken out from underneath you, though. Are you going to be able to contend for that title? Zach Gibbs in at ringside, the newest member of the British Empire. Liverpool's number one. I wonder what kind of an impact he'll have in his Survivor Series match as well. Suplexes over and over again right now by Zack Sabre Jr. Hit him in the gut, and here we go now. Another suplex as if I'm going to be a brain buster from ZSJ. Sabre Jr. feels like he's comfortably in control of this matchup right now and sending his message to anyone who dare listen. Heading into Survivor Series. Sabre Jr. now. A drop kick in the face. Has lined him up to seal this deal. It is orienteering with Napalm Death. The dangerous submission from Zack Sabre Jr. And it could finish TJP right now. He wanted this rematch. And now, is he going to regret it? The hold is still locked in. TJP kicking. Trying to get to the ropes. But to no avail. He taps out. And Zack Sabre Jr. is your winner here tonight to kickstart ECW. <clears throat> Was it ever in doubt that that would be the outcome? Maybe not. But Zack Sabre Jr., regardless of it, has picked up a win. And here comes a stagehand, much like we saw on SmackDown Live. A stagehand has hit the ring, and he's going after Zack Sabre Jr. right now. He is trying to target Sabre Jr. here, but Zack Gibson in from behind. Gibson in now, and it's a two-on-one attack on the stage, and to go with it. And now this is where the British Empire can play into their strong suit. The stage hand is supposed to be for another match. I think the stage hand was trying to attack anyone to prove the point there. This is for Jericho and One Lorcan. But the stage hand has hit the ring. I think he's I think he's made a mistake. I think he's targeted the wrong team as well. And it's backfired on him right now. It has backfired on him, no less. Oh, that is very good work from the stagehands there. Look at Sabre Jr. now. Snap is him. Down, drop kick in the side of the head. The stagehand has gone down. And he's going to be doing more than going down. He's going to be tapping out. Well, it's gone the wrong way for Magnum Opus in more than one occasion. The wrong team targeted. And it's still backfired on them. The stagehand taps out. Zack Sabre Jr. doesn't even have anything to do with this man. But the job has been done. Great stuff there for Magnum Opus. They're really looking strong heading into Survivor Series. The same can, the same can actually be said, though, for Zack Sabre Jr. The British Empire are going to be contesting a very, very big matchup. No doubt about it. Oh, that is to come this Sunday, though. Let's move on to our next contest. This one should be a good one. Coming up next, the greatest tag team that ever lived takes on the duo. Chris Jericho. Donay Lorcan. All right, time to get kick started with this tag team matchup then. The greatest tag team that ever lived. Tyler Breeze and Austin Aries taking on the four horsemen. Breeze and Aries, a bit of a new formation to the ECW tag team division. They've already had a crack at the tag team titles to go with. It didn't go that well for them, all things considered. But what mattered for them was getting the victory. It was uh, forming and trying to become the successful tag team. And there's plenty of reason why they should succeed. You look at the... Uh, titles to their names, the fact that Austin Aries has four title reigns, I believe it is. Tyler Breeze has two world title reigns, so between them they have six world title reigns, which is outstanding, to say the very least. They then have uh, two Royal Rumble victories between them, uh, a Money in the Bank briefcase, uh, <coughs> a United States Championship reign, an Intercontinental Championship reign, and uh, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they kind of cover every single base. Um, Austin Aries has won tag team titles before, so that's good. Uh, and Austin Aries has been the Cruiserweight Champion before. So, uh, as a tag team, they've won everything you can win. 
Wait, no. There's one thing that the, the pair of them haven't won. There's only one thing that the pair of them haven't won, and that is Money in the Bank. Neither of them have won the Money in the Bank briefcase. I don't think either of them have ever competed in Money in the Bank either. Maybe Breeze did this past year. I'm not 100% certain though, but I know for certain that neither of them have won that briefcase. Outside of that, as a team, they've won everything else there is to win. That's a very impressive forte. Now the Breeze has, just like Austin Aries, won at the main event to WrestleMania, gone in as the challenger, come out as the champion when he pulled off a very striking upset at that time to become the World Heavyweight Champion after winning the Royal Rumble. Tyler Breeze did it from number 16, I believe, whereas this man did it from the illustrious number 30. Now we wait to see how Austin Aries is in this matchup. A veteran of the ring, one of the most successful men in this universe, as I said, you know, so many titles under his possession. It is, at the very least, four world title reigns. Two times as the World Heavyweight Champion, once as the ECW Champion, once as the WWE Champion. Then after that, you have two Intercontinental title reigns. I keep on believing there's an ECW Television Championship reign in there, but I guess there isn't. There's definitely at least a Cruiserweight Championship reign. There might even be two. I think there is two in that whole thing. There is. And then the ECW Tag Team titles puts him up to nine. Nine title reigns. I don't even think Seth Rollins has that much. I don't even think CM Punk has that much. No, CM Punk doesn't. CM Punk has just won world titles in this universe, but he's won five of them, which is more than anyone else. That is incredible for Austin Aries. Nine titles in this universe, a surefire. If ever we're to launch a Hall of Fame, a surefire candidate without a shadow of a doubt. There's absolutely no way I would say anything else other than Hall of Famer for Austin Aries. Nevertheless, here are their opponents for the evening. Chris Jericho and One Lorcan, they will collide, of course, with the man that we just saw tapping out in the ring in stagehand. Uh, and the other stagehand, Damian Sandell and Aiden English of Magnum Opus. Uh, this Sunday in that traditional Survivor Series match, they will be teaming up with the DCC of Chris Sabin and whoever his opponent is. We know it's a new member of the DCC. We just don't know who it is, but we do know they will be revealed this Sunday. Jericho made his return on ECW two weeks ago, made his in-ring return last week, and now this is the first time they're going to work as a tag team here. Lorcan joined the horseman in the first episode of ECW in this series of universe. Now, since then, he's been looking to just cement himself within the Horseman. And tonight, along with this Sunday, is an incredible chance for that as he gets to work alongside the leader of the Horseman. We'll see how that will go, but it, like I said, it's a very tough matchup against two very, very successful singles athletes. The important question to ask, though, will be just because they're successful as singles athletes, can they be successful as tag team athletes? Austin Aries does have that tag team title reign under his belt, there's no doubt about it. But, can these guys work together to make it better for them, I guess? Can they work together to get even more success out of it? They have all those credentials as singles wrestlers, but are they just going to be two singles wrestlers in a tag team? Or are they going to be able to work together like a tag team? Like the Horsemen will be looking to do here tonight. Tag in, One Lorcan, now the legal man in this one, and now great opportunity for him to show what he's made of, gut wrench, power bomb there in the early get goes. He's feeling the effect of it already here. Tag, there was a, a, a phase almost that uh, Tyler Breeze went through at the start of this year where he moved it down to a more traditionalist attire, to a more very normal wrestling attire, but then that kind of changed when Austin Aries came on the scene and reminded Tyler Breeze of the greatness he once was and by the Everything has returned to Breeze, the uh, fashionable boots, the lavish attires, that is why it's all a part of Tyler Breeze now. Austin Aries has toned it down a little bit as well. I noticed there was no jacket in Aries' entrance. A little bit sad about that one. Nevertheless, Jericho, the legal man in this one now, two veterans of the ring teaming, uh, going up against one another right now. Good stuff there from Jericho with that power bomb. Got an early lead in this one over Aries. Northern Lights suplex now will go for the cover after it. A little surprised that Aries was able to get the shoulder up almost instantaneously, all things considered. Trading chops with one another now. And a crucifix will send Jericho down. Good cover attempt there by Aries. Can't get more than one, though. 
And this is just a great opportunity for Ares to show everyone why he is the most successful man in this universe. Why he has the most title reigns out of everyone in this universe. Controlling Jericho, their tag made. Tyler Breeze, the legal man in this one again. What are we going to see here from these guys? Dropping a fist down on him. That was very well done there. Ares holding his, his hands back there in a tiger suplex chicken wing position, whatever you want to call it. And that just left him defenseless to Breeze's diving fist drop. Good tag team offense there, though, from the greatest tag team that ever lived. He's in control right now, taking... Oh, taking over Jericho there, supermodel kick now, and Breeze could be in to try and make this a, a very unhappy evening for the four horsemen. Jericho, though, able to come in with a counter there when it was most needed. Let's see what will happen now, Jericho forcing Tyler Breeze back up to his feet, and here goes Jericho, shoulder tackle, another one nailed there by Jericho. Sent over the top rope. Oh, he hangs on in there. Up to the top rope. Goes Jericho and a double axe handle. Beautiful bit of work there by Jericho. Thinking in the moment as well. Really assisted him there with what he was looking for. No doubt about it. Tyler Breeze now down on the mat. Will this be where a tag is made? He might have been looking for Lorcan. Got denied though by Breeze. He gets denied by Jericho with a hard forearm in the face there. Here we go, in the ring. Elbow in the face there, courtesy of Breeze. Is he going to go for a backstabber of sorts? Breeze most certainly is, and he connects with it. Backstabber there by Breeze. But he cannot finish the deal right there. Jericho able to deliver the knee in the face. Only Lorcan hungry to get back in this one, I've noticed, on the outside. And he looks like he's going to get his wish as well. No, he's not. Breeze able to stop him again here. And going to force him all the way back into the corner with Austin Aries. Referee in the way now. He got caught up in the incident. Breeze can't really do much with the ref in the way. Might want to get out of the way here, ref. You're in the way of the action. All right, now Breeze has just stopped in place. Oh, beauty shot! Beauty shot from Breeze! He was waiting for that. And he pounced right on the opportunity. Is he done? Oh, Lorcan jumped the gun there. Lorcan jumped the gun. Trying to free his partner. Now he'll come in and he can still make the save. With plenty of time to spare. Drop kick there, missed by Breeze. Breeze might want to turn his attention elsewhere though. What is... Alright, that's not too certain why Breeze went on the apron there. But I went outside of the ring rather. But there you go. Jericho almost done for, but the save by Lorcan there necessary. And he's going to be very glad of it as well. Jericho, good kick right in the face there. And I, if I was Jericho, I would do exactly this. Try and get that tag into Lorcan. And finally it has happened. Oh, no, Lorcan now fired up and ready to go. No doubt about that one. Let's see what he'll do. Almost exactly the same as the last time. Gut wrench power bomb the breeze. You see... Aries there on the apron, clamoring for the tag in there briefly. Not getting it though, great evasion from, from Lorcan and look at this now. Smacking him in the face over and over again with those open hand strikes. In the corner, running up a cut. No doubt that Breeze wasn't going to be able to get up on, uh, from that one. And Lorcan, oh this is a dangerous one if I remember rightly. Here we go, running in, running blockbuster from Oney Lorcan. He thinks it's going to finish Breeze. Here he stopped in his tracks. Breeze still able to kick out at two there. Austin Aries was sent outside the ring in the moment. Those counter there from Tyler Breeze. Keeps him in it, but he's got no one to tag into. And he misses with his splash in the corner as well. Shoulder tackle. Down goes Breeze. And that may leave him in perfect position. Lorcan not messing around, just tags in Jericho. And now the message can be sent to Magnum Opus. This is what you have to deal with at Survivor Series. Lion Tamer attempt was countered. Lion Tamer attempt countered there. Breeze in again. Oh, beauty shot counted as well. Counter after counter from both sides. Excellent to see. But neither getting what they want. Jericho, though, going to line up. Tyler Breeze, lion salt from Jericho. Lion salt connected. 
And now it's the final piece to the puzzle. The Lion Tamer applied. Breeze has absolutely nowhere to go and nothing to do if you ask me but to tap out. And that's what he does. The horsemen are victorious on ECW. A return to form was necessary and they secured it as well. Days before Survivor Series. It is the team's opposing magnum opus that looked the best. And it is magnum opus themselves that look the absolute worst. Not really that surprising, all things considered, heading into Survivor Series. But it is a grand opportunity for that man on the right, no doubt about it, to stand out on a stage where many are going to be paying attention alongside the man who is leading him towards greatness. Great to see Jericho back in tag team action as well. Hopefully this Sunday when they represent ECW, they get the win alongside the DCC of all teams. Nevertheless, let's move on to our next contest. Johnny Gargano in action again here tonight. Gargano's desperation to get these victories after losing the ECW tag team titles to downfall, to downfall continues on. And his quest for victory now meets a very enraged John Cena. Well, like I said, Gargano is dealing with an irate Cena after what happened last week. Last week here on ECW, John Cena was ready to go one-on-one -on -one against Kenny Omega, but that match was thrown completely out of the window after the actions of Roman Reigns. Cena and Omega had barely gotten into the match before along comes Roman Reigns through the crowd to spear John Cena and gift Omega the win. Omega came backstage after the show and after the uh, match happened to Cena and he apologized for it. He said he never saw what happened. If he had known it, well, he wouldn't have gone for the cover. But... Cena said the damage was done. He did not hold any ill will towards Kenny Omega, but he holds a plenty of ill will towards Roman Reigns, and he's going to make him pay for that this Sunday at Survivor Series when Roman Reigns and John Cena square off. Raw versus ECW. That will happen uh, this Sunday. As for tonight, though, he has Johnny Gargano to deal with. As I said, Gargano trying to get a victory since losing those ECW tag team titles to downfall uh, a few weeks back here on ECW. And it's that idea, that it's that desperation almost. Two weeks ago they lost the titles and Gargano has wanted to prove himself from that very moment since then as if to say, we should be better than this. DIY needs these titles back and they want to do everything in their power to make sure that does indeed happen. Gargano took on uh, Seth Rollins last week. Almost got a victory because of the involvement of one Kazuchika Okada. The only difference is he's here tonight, but he's actually invited. Cena, of course, will also be looking to bounce back from last week. And, of course, with Roman Reigns picking up another victory on Monday Night Raw over Sami Zayn, you better believe that John Cena is going to want to prove a few things to be true here. And he has a tough opponent to do it in, another resilient opponent for him to square up against as well in Johnny Gargano. Cena ready for the action, though. I've got to say that I've really been enjoying Cena on ECW thus far. I think he's been making an immediate impact. I think he's been putting on entertaining contests, but... What I hope for heading into this Sunday is that Cena isn't too clouded with the idea of wanting to just clout Roman Reigns. I just wanted to put him down. As he called him, I believe it was two weeks ago again, he called him a sick puppy and said he was going to put him down because of it. I hope he isn't too obsessed with that ideology. That he doesn't focus on the match and that leads to a crucial loss for him. That absolutely cannot afford to happen for Cena. He needs a win. Absolutely needs a win. Way more than Reigns needs the win. That much is for certain. If Cena gets too lost in his mind, if he if he lets himself go too far, if he's too far gone, then yeah, it's going to be a Roman Reigns win, no doubt about it. Nevertheless, ready to go in this contest here. Gargano out of the gates there. Great bit of work on Cena. And that was a problem there for Cena. Came swinging out of the gates. Tried for going for a lariat that just was not going to happen and paid for it. Cena remember the counter now and here we go between these two. Cena, Luthers press, takedown, and loading away on Gargano there. Two tough opponents in two tough weeks for Gargano. Two tough weeks without those ECW tag team titles along with Johnny, uh, along with Tommaso Ciampa, of course. Gargano has just wanted to fight every week, though. Not too certain about Tommaso Ciampa. Haven't really heard from him since losing the titles. Maybe he's gone into recluse somewhere. I'm not really 100% certain. What I do know right now, though, is that Gargano is still fighting on. Nasty counter there, though. From Cena onto Gargano, that much was for certain. These hits. Good evasion though by Gargano, discus forearm and Cena goes down. 
Good work there. Let's see what will happen. Chopping the chest. Counted. Oh! Cena hitting hard and then missing with that shoulder tackle to go with it. Gargano now in. Saito suplex and Cena comes down on his head and neck there. What can Gargano do with this opportunity? What would a win over John Cena do for Johnny Gargano in the long term? Looked good against Rollins last week, but you've got to give a lot of that assistance to Kazuchika Okada. But here tonight, on his own against Cena, what can he do? Nice frog splash there on John Cena. Cover made. Kick out. Very similar, of course. Gargano is in many ways to the opponent that Roman Reigns faced on Monday in Sami Zayn as well. Strikes being unloaded upon there. Good counter though from Cena. He needs to get some big offense on the go right now though. Because Gargano's doing an awfully good job of hanging in there with him right now. Sami Zayn did the same on Monday Night Raw though. He's able to get in a halluva kick on uh, Roman Reigns as well before succumbing to the spear. Great counter from Gargano. Caught the leg and a dragon screw will send him down. It's a long hunt for DIY to become the ECW Tag Team Champions. When they finally achieved it, it felt right for them, but feels as if they've never had the chance to truly excel as Tag Team Champions yet. Their first reign was long, but it was almost lacking. There was other things that it got caught up in as well, other parts of ECW that it ended up being uh, overshadowing it almost. Great counter there by Gargano. Uh, sunset flip on Cena. Going to try and put him away here. Cena counting back over, putting his weight down on Gargano's shoulders. Will this do it? Yeah, no, Gargano. Fights his way out of two. Much needed that he did that as well. Good shot in the ribs there of Cena. From behind now, reverse Horakarana. And Cena hits them at hard. What's Gargano going to do here? This is going to be great strength from him. Full Nelson transitions it into a face buster. Incredible move from Gargano. Covers Cena here, who gets the shoulder up at the can of two. Gargano ain't giving in. Goes up to that top rope again. Is he going to hit that frog splash again? No, because Cena evades it. Great evasion there from John Cena. Gargano stumbling as a result of it. And now, what a move there from Cena into that face buster. Dragging him away now, Cena. Is he going to look? I think he might be looking for a five-knuckle shuffle here. He most certainly is. Gargano's in immense trouble in the middle of the ring. No one to save him right now but himself, Cena. Five knuckle shuffle to Gargano, and only one move left to come after. But Cena, perhaps showing some more aggression here. Hefty knee in the face of Johnny Wrestling as well. And now Cena looks for the final piece of the puzzle. Johnny Wrestling, maybe put out a past attitude adjustment from one vicious John Cena, and that has done it. Cena wins here tonight on ECW and the aggression that he wanted to show heading into uh, Survivor Series against Roman Reigns has been shown now. Cena is ready for this contest. Roman Reigns is ready as well. It is now just about these two men meeting this Sunday and sealing the fate between the two. Was, was this going to be about brand supremacy? Yes. Is it still about that? Yeah. But is it also about these two guys wanting to beat the other one? No doubt about it. Cena, your winner. He's not finished quite yet. Cena with the microphone in hand now, and here we go. Time to deliver his message. Hasn't finished yet, but Cena saying to Roman Reigns, hope you were paying attention to that, because what you see this Sunday, you have unleashed. Roman Reigns is the cause for what happens. Roman Reigns is to blame for what happens to him this Sunday. Cena takes no remorse in it. He will say it one more time. Roman Reigns is a sick puppy and Cena puts him down. Stern, serious and to the point. John Cena is not about fun and games anymore. Stern, serious and to the point is what I will say about that. Cena has now sent his message to Roman Reigns. And there is no more to be sent. It is only action that will happen. And that action will come this Sunday. Well, Cena's message is done. And now we wait for that match this Sunday. But it's time to move on to our main event of the evening. And this one should be a very entertaining one. Absolutely no doubt about it. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson making their way towards the ring. But it's going to be Carl Anderson who will be in action here tonight. Going one-on-one -on -one against Adam Cole. Now, if you've been a fan of this universe for a while, you'll know... Ooh, this one's going to be a little bit awkward. 
Two former members of the Bullet Club. The former leader of the Bullet Club on one side and the most successful tag team in this universe's history on the other. The reality is that these were all aligned with each, with each other. They were all friends. They were all <clears throat> on each other's side until Adam Cole turned, them, turned on them, stabbed them in the back. But at the time, it, it sounded like a good idea. At the time, to be fair, it was what the crowd wanted. It was what the people wanted. It might not have been what I wanted, but still, it was what everyone else wanted. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows felt betrayed in that moment. They hadn't talked to Adam Cole since then. And I don't know what things are like backstage. Maybe things have improved. I honestly, absolutely couldn't tell you. What I do know is that if they haven't improved, this is going to be a very personal matchup between two sides. The four-time World Tag Team Champions in Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. The man who this Sunday has a chance to get a, to get a match against Seth Rollins on his way. If Adam Cole wins that triple threat match involving Samoa Joe and Hiroshi Tanahashi, he is the number one contender to the ECW Championship. That simple. He will face Seth Rollins in the next ECW exclusive pay-per-view. Of course, he has got two very tough opponents also in that matchup as well. Tanahashi, Samoa Joe. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one for them to deal with. Nevertheless, here we go in this one. Adam Cole ready to go. Who... <clears throat> who can Adam Cole hope to uh, I don't know why I'm saying who what can Adam Cole hope to do to overcome these guys in the ring he knows them so well he knows uh, Carl Anderson so well that should assist in this matchup but it has been a long time since they shared a ring with one another and even then it was for differing reasons one thing's for certain though is that Adam Cole's support has not dithered at all and I have to say, though, the Good Brothers, whichever way you look at it, I've said it since they've returned, after they had a few weeks, after they had a, a few weeks off, I still stand by these guys. I think these guys are great. I think these guys are a class act. I have nothing but respect for them. I have nothing but adoration for them in many regards. And I think Carl Anderson kind of proving there that water isn't under the bridge between these two sides. There is still plenty of personal vendettas especially on the side of Carl Anderson. And you know what? I think both sides are entitled to it. They thought they were a brotherhood. They thought they were as closely aligned with each other as they could possibly be. <clears throat> but Adam Cole decided that wasn't the case. Adam Cole turned his back on the family. But it was a family that was not liked by anyone except the family and me. So maybe he made the right decision in that moment. What I do know is that right now, Carl Anderson might want to make him pay for it. Or maybe this is the aggression that Anderson had within him at that time shining through in the ring. Here we go, though. Fighting out in this matchup right now. They're trading counters. Super kick in the leg. Super kick after it by Adam Cole. Thing of perfection. As I said, Adam Cole gearing up for that impressive matchup at Survivor Series. Going to be squaring up against... Hiroshi Tanahashi and Samoa Joe in a triple threat match that you do not want to miss along with the rest of that Survivor Series card this Sunday truth be told <clears throat> you absolutely don't want to miss any of it it's going to be an incredible night of action it's going to be a night that we're going to be talking about for some time as well I think especially with that main event Carl Anderson right now though good counter there on Adam Cole Cole holding his jaw a little bit taking a bit off guard as well that's not going to help his uh, ordeal out at all <coughs> Bit of work there from Carl Anderson. However, Adam Cole able to stop him. Irish whip off the ropes comes Anderson now. Drop under. Looks like a lariat attempt by Cole. Got countered. Great back and forth reversals from both sides, though. And now Carl Anderson slowly getting up to his feet. Oh, good counter. Oh, maybe not. What a kick there from Adam Cole. Thing of beauty that he struck with there. I thought Anderson got in a good counter. Adam Cole almost as if saying, absolutely not. No way did you just pull that off. Cole now up to the top rope. Dangerous position. Too close to Carl Anderson as well. Mistake made there by Adam Cole. But it doesn't let Carl Anderson back into this. Because good evasion there by Adam Cole. <clears throat> Able to keep him in it. Drop kick attempt there. Countered. And Cole is in now. Ushigaroshi from Cole. And follows it up with a neck crank as well. Great combo of moves. And Cole hasn't stopped there either. Up to the top rope he goes now. Adam Cole in. Elbow drop. 
recovers Carl Anderson. Will this put him away? No, Anderson getting that shoulder up at two. Uh oh, Cole, super kick, here it comes, the last shot, running knee. Adam Cole strikes big with it and could be striking his way to victory with it as well. Calling, Carl Anderson up to his feet now. What an, oh no, missed with the drop kick, missed with the drop kick, and Anderson in. Anderson can stand, can stand. Will this be victory? There's one, two, and a kick out from Kohler too. Oh my goodness, what a move there by Carl Anderson. How did he know? How did he know to evade him in that moment? I have no idea, but that was absolutely incredible from him. I cannot, I, I can't say anything other than that. Cole now though, what an evasion. What a move to slip his way out of it as well. Great counter there, neck breaker. High octane main event this has turned into now. Running forearm in the corner. And the aggression from both sides, the personalness that this has taken over. Might be shining through in its truest form right now. Great bit of work there by Cole. Locking the legs in and hitting one hell of a face plant. Cole might have been thinking. Might have been thinking Panama Sunrise there, but decided against it. Maybe in the last moment. What are we going to see now from Adam Cole? Long walk over there. Oh boy. This could pan out bad for Carl Anderson. Adam Cole setting him up. Shot him, struck him perfectly in the jaw there. And Cole is in position now. Here we go. Superplex, baby. <laughs> Cole strikes with a superplex. Has he done enough to put this match to rest now? Carl Anderson doesn't seem to be moving much longer. Super kick by Cole into Florida Keys. Doesn't go for the cover though because there is one move left to finish the deal. Anderson stumbles to his feet. And Panama Sunrise will end Carl Anderson. The cover made, Gallows watches on, Adam Cole wins just before Survivor Series. There you have it. Cole cannot be put down even by an old friend. There was certainly some animosity between both sides, but at the end of it all, Adam Cole shone through as the winner. And will we be saying the same this Sunday? And will it be Adam Cole who goes on? to have that chance at Seth Rollins if he wins that triple threat match. We will most certainly find out this Sunday when he faces, 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 Hiroshi Tanahashi and Samoa Joe. It's a match you don't want to miss. Coming up next is something else that you don't want to miss. A stare down, a face off, and a war of words between Seth Rollins and Kazuchika Okada. Just days before they make history at Survivor Series, the Rainmaker and the greatest of all time, in the ring, up next. And the crowd is already buzzing for it. There's no other way of saying it. They are electric for what they're about to see, and so am I. The difference is when they make their entrances this Sunday, well, the bell will ring and there will be a match to be had. As for tonight, however, it is all about getting under each other's skin one last time. They said they didn't want to hit each other before Survivor Series. So far they have kept to it. But for how much longer will that stay this will that stay the cause? We're about to find out. In the final meeting between the two before Survivor Series. Seth Rollins heads towards the ring. He's had matches these last two weeks. He has been competing on the way to Survivor Series. And that's where things are a little bit different, I have to say. He has been competing on the way to Survivor Series. Okada hasn't. To the best of my knowledge, Okada hasn't even had one match since No Way Out. And if Okada's last match was a defeat, surely that means good things for this man who has been competing since No Way Out, where he won. He has competed since then, where he has won on both occasions over tough opponents on both occasions as well so there's every reason for Seth Rollins to feel pretty damn confident heading into this Sunday at the end of the day of course he also has that championship around his waist the ECW title which he has not let go of now for some 400 and 
God, we've got to be close to 440 days now, just increasing the lead as the longest reigning champion in the history of this universe. But this Sunday, it is just about finding out who the greatest is. Not only who the greatest champion is, who the greatest face of the brand is, just who the greatest is. And Rollins stands in the ring as we await the arrival of one man, the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada is here on ECW and this place is more than happy to welcome the Rainmaker as well. There's nothing gonna happen, I promise you that. Nothing suspicious, no attacks, no bat, no jumping him, nothing of that sort. This will just be Okada and Rollins standing in the ring opposite for one another. This is exactly what they wanted and it's what they get. Okada heading towards the ring. The ace of SmackDown Live looking for one little bit of glory before Survivor Series. As to be said, Rollins and Okada has done a lot of building here on ECW. It was where this match was put out. Rollins put the challenge out on ECW. Okada stayed, the first time they stayed face to face with each other was on ECW. And then last week, Okada came out to try and distract Rollins and cause him to lose the match to Gargano. Didn't work, but certainly got under Rollins' skin. I will say that. We came backstage after the show was done and Rollins was very frustrated, very um, annoyed. And look at that now. The Okada Bucks rolling, falling from the sky ahead of Survivor Series. Great addition to see there. And Okada... Perhaps trying to live up to what Rollins said last week about him being the faux rainmaker. Well, Okada really saying, I can actually make it rain. Nice little touch there, but I'm not too certain if it dissuades the point that Rollins is trying to make. Regardless of all of that, though, here we go. If I'm this hyped for them two meeting in the ring, what am I going to do when they fight? And so here we go. Rollins is going to be the one to talk first to Okada and saying that how does it feel to actually be welcomed on a show? How does it feel to not have to jump through the crowd to try and get under someone's skin? It's a little different, isn't it, Okada? Well, welcome to the A show. Welcome to the show that you wish you could be the face of. Welcome to the show that will triumph over SmackDown Live at Survivor Series. Welcome to Seth Rollins' show. What do you have to say to that one, Okada? A quick fire shot there from Rollins. But Okada saying that... All that is just talk. Okada can think as mighty, uh, Rollins can think as mighty as he wants in the head. But the reality is, when they meet this Sunday, it's about the body. It's about the physicality. How physical can Rollins get with Okada? Rollins has plenty to lose. Rollins is a champion. And what would happen if he lost to someone who didn't even hold a title in Okada? And Rollins combating that as if to say that Rollins is almost saying he's not better than Okada. Sorry, the other way around, Mother. Okada's saying he's not better than Rollins, and uh, Rollins is glad that he's admitted to that. That's what we've been trying to say this whole time. So what he's saying is if Okada beat Rollins, then Rollins should be ashamed. Should be ashamed that he lost to a worse wrestler. Is that what Okada is trying to say? Trying to get under Okada's skin really good here. I like it. Okada saying that Rollins diving too deep into everything once again trying to get the word to, trying to get the advantage in the ring when it comes to his fat mouth but the reality is Okada cannot wait to strike a rainmaker right into it and shut him up for good and he will shut him up at Survivor Series yes he is under Okada's skin yes he will walk out victorious at Survivor Series and Rollins instantly laughs off that fact Okada if he has shown anything these last few weeks, he has no game plan for Survivor Series. He throws everything at the wall and hopes that something sticks. Rollins doesn't need that because he throws one thing at the wall every time and it sticks every time. Okada is done for. Okada saying that he can throw everything at the wall. He can, he can afford to do that. Rollins can only afford one, to throw one thing at the wall, and that doesn't matter. But the reality is, for everything that Okada throws at the wall, these people throw at the wall as well. These people help Okada through it all. They never give up on Okada, and they won't this Sunday. And Rollins will learn. That is a harsh truth. And Rollins saying that 
He will end things off here the same way he started. And he will end things here the same way he will at Survivor Series. Trumping Okada, shutting him up and being victorious. Take a good hard look at the A show because this is the last time we'll be on equal grounds. At Survivor Series, Rollins will burn it down. Rollins will conquer Okada. Okada loses. Rollins wins. And there it is, the final message sent, the final war of words between men who will become bitter rivals this Sunday, Seth Rollins versus Kazuchika Okada, don't miss it.